Sports. It's in the game. What's good, YouTube? DM Gaming here, guys. Hope everybody's having an awesome day. You know how it is, man. We back in this thing, guys. I want to get straight to it. Guys, you are going to have to seriously consider who you do your rebuild with in college football 25. Guys, I'm telling y'all now, if you think that you are going to get into this game and, and, and you're going to play with a Kennesaw State, uh, 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 the Chanticleers, uh, um, freaking, freaking Louisiana Lafayette, La Tech, any lower lower five conference school, if you think you are going to play with one of those teams, a Texas State, okay, a Sam Houston State, what, what Stephen they say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Guys, if you think that you're going to play with one of those schools and be a powerhouse in three years, you're sadly mistaken. This is not the game for you. But... I'm happy about that, okay? I'm happy about that because it's going to add some, some longevity to Dynasty mode. It's going to add some replayability to Dynasty mode because you're not going to be, I mean, just imagine if you could rebuild us, if you could build a school into a powerhouse in three to four years, like really, really consider that, how easy that would be, how quickly that would get old, okay? But instead, guys, the way that this game is set up with the uh, recruiting, with the transfer portal, with um with with the the gameplay you can see why it's not going to be that easy guys if you get into a game okay if you get into a game with a lower rank school now i'm not talking about or let me say lower class school because i say lower rank people think top 25 no no lower class school okay non power 4 conference school and even some power 4 conference schools vandy hollering at you Indiana, I'm talking to you. If you get into the game with some of these lower, lower uh, prestige schools, that's the good word to use, lower prestige. Well, I'm not going to say that, but y'all get what I'm saying. Don't expect to dominate, okay? Because even myself, you know, I was considering doing a rebuild with SMU, okay? SMU is not a bad ball club, but if you think for a second that SMU is going to compete with the likes of Georgia, Alabama, Oklahoma, Think again, guys. Think again. All right. And that's just being real. They would probably compete better. But, you know, you a lot of people are wanting to play with Appalachian State and Kennesaw and James Madison and all of these these Sunbelt schools and things like that, guys. In order to even get ranked, you're going to have to go undefeated. You're going to have to play some big time schools. OK. And, yeah, we have custom schedules and you can go in there and you can put a Tennessee in there. You could put a Georgia in there and try to pull the ultimate upset. But realistically, in this game, it's going to be crazy difficult. OK, and, and that's a good thing. My question is, can you handle that? How many people can handle losing over and over and over again? This to me, it, it, how many of y'all have played like Demon Souls or Elden Ring or Lords of the Fallen or Secrio or Neo? Any of those Souls likes games, this is a Souls like. If you're playing with a lower prestige team, this this almost becomes a Souls like game. You're gonna beat your your conference opponents. That's that's gonna be a challenge, but not a challenge. You get what I'm saying? But it's whenever you step out of that realm and you play some of these top 25 schools, or you play some of these power four conference schools like a Oregon, okay, like a Wisconsin. Like a Texas A&M. Like a USC. Like a LSU. Who do you think you are? To, to walk into Death Valley at night. And think you're going to come out with an upset. Who do you think you are that you're going to walk into the big house? That you're going to walk into Tallahassee? That you're going to... You know what I'm saying? Just being realistic, guys. The way that the game is set up, you're more than likely going to lose those games. Can you win? Most definitely. I'm not saying that you can't. Guys, but 
Long gone are the days where stick skills is the only thing that contributes to you winning a football game. Long gone are the NCAA 14 where I can play with the lower, very lower class school like an Ohio and I can get out there and beat Ohio State. Because, guys, the players actually matter. They've already told us. The people that have played it have told us. The developers have told us that when you're playing, uh, it, there's going to be a difference between a five-star and a two-star. And guess what? Those are the type of guys that you're going to have on these lower-class lower, lower class teams. You're not going to have four- and five-star guys on those rosters. You're going to have two-stars, one-stars. Your best athlete's more likely going to be a three-star guy. You'd be blessed to sign a four-star. A super rarity to sign a five-star, guys. This is just being realistic, man. It's going to be a dogfight. And you should be up for it. That should excite you. Because why? Like I said in yesterday's video, it's realistic to real life, dude. You're not seeing Louisiana Monroe going out there going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alabama or LSU. You're not seeing that, okay? That's realistic. You're not seeing UMass going out there, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Penn State at night at the Whiteout game. It's not going to happen. You're not even going to get Whiteout attention in the game. Penn State only do Whiteout for big games, baby. Tennessee only do the checkerboard for big games. You're not big time, big dog. So don't be surprised, guys, if you're rebuilding. Understand the challenge that is before you, but you embrace it. Because that's what football is about, getting out there and getting after it, week in and week out. Guys, this dynasty mode is going to really, really, really make you work for it, guys. And that's good because you should want to work for it. You should be excited for the challenge to build your program. That's what you are going to be doing, building a program. You can play with a school that's already established, but guess what? It's still going to be challenging, but everybody loves a rebuild. Everybody loves a Cinderella story, okay? And, and, and when we play our rebuilds, understand that it's going to be a challenge, okay? Understand that. Accept that and be happy for it. Guys, recruiting is going to be difficult. You're not going to be able to sign these five-star recruits like you could in NCAA 14 just by overloading them with your recruiting points. They are going to specifically have certain things that smaller schools are not going to be able to meet. Does it mean that you won't be able to sign a five-star at all? Probably. It, I think it's going to be extremely rare. You know what I'm saying? I keep mentioning Kennesaw State because that's what people keep talking about. Teams like that aren't going to be able to sign a five-star guy. It's, if it happens, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Strike up Sports Center, because the same way that Travis Hunter made waves, waves through not just NCAA world, but the sports world, period, a five star going to a HBCU, a FCS school. You know what I'm saying? How how news breaking that was. Guys, the game is going to be the same way. OK, don't expect to sign these five stars. And don't expect to just build your program up in a few years because it's going to take longer than that. And the reason why is largely because of that. Your talent isn't going to be able to keep up. Does it mean you can't win some big time games here or there? No, it, it, you can definitely win. It's going to be a challenge. But the game isn't just going to say, oh, you beat Alabama. Let's throw you up in the rankings. Let's make you a prestigious school. OK, some recruits are going to want to uh, go to a team that can get them to the NFL. You might think that, hey, if you dominate in the Sun Belt, you can go to the NFL. It's a lot harder to go to the NFL from the Sun Belt as it is from the SEC, the ACC, the Big 12, the, 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 the old Pac-12, the Big 10. You know what I'm saying? That's just being realistic. And, and then roster management, you have to consider this, too, that nobody's talked about, nobody's thought about. OK, imagine being Ohio, OK, the Bobcats, and you got a, 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 a talent. A talent that they hadn't had in years who's NFL eligible, who's who's a guy that could go to the league, but he's a junior. OK, and this even goes for the older schools, too, guys. The way that the game does does classifications between freshmen and seniors, how freshmen are easily rattled. They their their composure has takes bigger hits and stuff like that. Certain things that they just can't access that seniors can from a uh, mental standpoint and mental uh, ability standpoint. You're going to have to really, really consider now whenever you have a junior that wants to go to the league, okay? 
or a red shirt sophomore who wants to go to the NFL because you got to do three years in college football. OK, red shirt included. So those juniors who want to leave early, those red shirt juniors who want to leave early. OK, because on your resume, it, it, it's going to look good for recruiting purposes that, hey, we had guys go to the NFL. But from a on the on the, the negative side of the recruiting aspect for that. It's not going to do well if, hey, my red shirt junior or my ju true junior quarterback is going to the NFL and my backup is just a sophomore. An inexperienced one at that. You have to really consider that, especially if you're trying to have a big year. Now, now think of the magnitude of that from a smaller school. You get a, a once in a program opportunity to have a junior on your school go to the NFL early or want to go, you're going to have to talk him into staying because your backup is an inexperienced freshman or sophomore like that, you know, but on the flip side of it, hey, if he gets drafted, that helps our program build because now I can say, hey, we're sending guys to the NFL. Does that make sense? You are really going to have to hold on to those seniors. Those are the guys that you're going to want on the field. The game, because of these abilities, have now added a new element of depth to it, and that is the mental aspect of the game. That hasn't been represented before, not to this degree. Like, you you have had composure in the game, don't get me wrong, but the game has never set up in a way that there is a clear disparity between freshmen and seniors. They purposely have put that into this game. Where if, you, if a senior makes a mistake, he's able to get over it a little bit quicker. Whereas your freshman is, and now it makes your roster management so much more in depth, guys. People were some people were talking in the comments that I'm boosting this game or this or that or dude, there's errors in the gameplay and stuff, so, bro. I have not once talked about anything regarding. Don't, I don't think I have it, regarding actual gameplay. Everything for the most part that I have talked about has been elements of the game. The gameplay looks fantastic. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to have people mess up on blocks and things like that. It's a video game at the end of the day. That's why I ain't really just talking about actual gameplay. I'm talking about gameplay elements, dude. The depth of this game, the backbone, the skeleton, the foundation. And this foundation is truly built on something that is going to make you work. Simulation football at its finest, dude. Like, I, I'm sitting here thinking about it. That's what makes me most exciting for my rebuild is that, dang, dude, this is going to be a challenge. It, you're going to really have to consider, do I want to schedule playing a top 10 team, a top 25 team? You're going to really be kind of shaking in your boots when you're playing with a school like, like Kennesaw State and you're looking, you got LSU on the schedule or you got Georgia Tech on the schedule or Georgia for that matter. You're going to see how they feel in real life. Why? Because the wear and tear system. Your players are not going to be as athletic. They're not going to be as strong. They're, the wear and tear on your team after a game like that is going to be tremendous. They're going to take big hits. Why? Because the team you're playing against can hit harder. They're faster. They're stronger. They can take more punishment because they deal with it week in and week out. They have already said that those those running backs, you don't don't expect to just put in a guy who hasn't been playing all season and expect him to go a full game. There's going to be wear and tear on him a lot more because they have to adapt to that. They have to get used to that. OK, so you're going to have to really consider playing these schools on your schedule. You're not going to just do like we used to do in NCAA 14 and on those games that we can change, we're just putting a bunch of top 25 schools in there because we know we can beat them. And we know if we go undefeated, that we'll be in the top 10, if not the top five, possibly get into the BCS bowl game. And that was even a challenge. It was sometimes you go undefeated and still wouldn't make it. Now we have the 12 team playoff where your conference champions get in and then you have a couple of ad wild bids. That's still going to be a challenge. That is still going to be a challenge, man. I cannot wait because I am up for the challenge, man. Souls like in a, in a football game is crazy, man. Recruiting matters. Playing those backups are going to matter because, hey, I've been playing my starting running back all game. What if he goes down? Your backup ain't been playing that much. Now you got to play your backup and your third string ain't got no playing time. The risk of them transferring out, the risk of, of them not being game ready, taking big hits, being hurt, bouncing back and forth. Like all of those things are going to play a component and you're going to understand why whenever a lower class school beats a high class top 10, top 25 school, that it makes 
the news as a huge upset. You're going to feel what it's like back whenever Appalachian State knocked off Michigan in the big house. I can get an NCAA 14 right now and make that happen easy peas and lemon squeezy. But I have heard from these guys who have been playing the game that they thought they could walk in there and do kind of the same thing. No dice. They hanging up 50 on them. And yeah, eventually we'll get used to the gameplay and it may be a little bit easier, maybe a little bit easier to knock off some of these schools. You know, you can kind of, some people will attest that, oh, they're not used to the gameplay. That's why that happens. I, I don't think so, man. That ES, EA Sports is literally telling you guys that it's not going to be easy to take these lower ranked schools and turn them into powerhouses overnight in three or four seasons like we was able to do in NCAA 14. Because of the core structure of the game, because of the way the recruiting is done, because of the transfer portal, even the coaching carousel, guys. Like I told y'all in past videos, it, it, coaches, they're going to have players that are tied to them through recruiting. And hey, your offensive coordinator didn't get it done. You want to fire him? You're taking a big risk because the players that he's attached to, you better hope your four and five star not because they could easily enter the transfer portal. And this reflects over in the road to glory. You build trust with one coach. If he leaves, then you got to start all over again with coach trust. That's realistic to the real world. I love it. So it's going to make you really, really consider who you hire as a head coach in dynasty mode and who you fire. You may develop yourself as a head coach into more of a recruiter. OK, if you bring on an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator does the same, then, yeah, you'll get a tremendous boost in recruiting. But then you're lacking team building and you're lacking the X's and the O's. So balance is going to be really necessary. But let's say recruiting's not doing so well. I want to go in a different look and I hire a different offensive coordinator. And now my starting quarterback is talking about transferring or my big time running back. And, and guess what? The way that this game is, it ain't even got to be your big time, guys. Your backups are going to be crazy, crazy important in this game. You're not going to want your backups to leave because now you're dealing with third and possibly fourth string guys who's not going to be up to the same quality. You're going to take a tremendous roster hit if your backup running back leaves, if your backup quarterback leaves. Now you're dealing with a third and possibly fourth string guy that's just not up to par. No more. Are we are you looking at playing with uh, just your starters? You may have some dogs here and there, but those backups are going to have to play and not just your second string, your third string, too. So now you see the challenge in playing with these lower level schools, how they're not going to have near the depth that a power five school or power four school is going to have. They're not going to have near the depth that a top 10 school is going to have. They're not going to have the depth of an LSU. They're not going to have the depth of an Alabama or of a Wisconsin. You get what I'm saying? Of a Texas where their third strings are good enough to start for these schools like Louisiana Tech and Kennesaw State. You know what I'm saying? And so you're starting to realize just how challenging it's going to be, guys. And, and we've been doing a playbook series on the channel. Go and check it out. I made a playlist for it. Your playbook, your scheme is going to have to matter. If you got a, a bunch of slow guys, you don't need to be running anything quick game. You don't need to be running a spread offense with a bunch of slow guys. Not going to work. Or vertical schemes, okay? Don't be running no 3-3-5 stack if your defense is slow. If your linebackers can't move. You're going to have trouble big time. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that your scheme, your, your, your playbook also fits the personnel that you have. You want to go into, hey, I'm going to be a new coach at SMU and, and I'm going to change them to the option game. You are going to struggle big time because they're not built for that. Just like you would in real life. If, if I'm an option style coach and I go into the University of Texas and say, hey, we're going to start running triple option. I am going to struggle big time because the personnel that is there is not built for that. The game operates the same way, guys. It's real life. It's simulation. That's what we wanted. That's what we got. And I freaking love it. You're going to have to recruit to fit that offense. Does that make sense? You can't have big these big six, eight guys, you know, burly guys on the offensive line that you would have to protect you in a spread game. OK, option style offensive linemen are smaller and quicker. But they're physical. You get what I'm saying? You're going to have to consider your playbook. You're going to have to consider the plays that you run. You're going to have to consider the schemes that you run. You're going to have to consider personnel. And when you're playing with these lower level schools, the picking is not going to be wildly to your advantage. The top players aren't going to want to come to your school. And you're going to have to build that program. You're going to have to give them a reason to come. What, that, what does the saying goes? And I leave y'all with that. If you build it, if you build it, they will come.
Guys, subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon so you don't miss a single upload. I upload every day. Okay? I upload every day. I'm uploading this video before I go to work. And we're going to do the playbook series this evening. We'll do the 3-4 defense. That's what everybody's been requesting. So we're going to get after that. And guys, I'm just trying to make the wait less painful. Because, man, it's fun making these videos, and I look forward to it every day. Understand, guys, up front that when the game drops, guys, we are going to be on it with the content. But I am a teacher and I am a coach. So understand that once the season starts, things are going to change some. I'm going to have to develop a new schedule because coaching at the high school level, man, and during football, you're, you, I mean, it's, it's most days during the week and not counting game nights. I probably won't get home till like 8, 9 o'clock at night. And that's including family time and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And have to get back up and be at work at 7. So we're going to have to figure out a schedule. And I ain't even going to lie to y'all. I literally thought about just teaching only. That way I can be available to do this. Because y'all been showing me crazy support, man. And I love it. And, and my goal, I, one of my goals is to be a full-time YouTuber. But I also would love to be a college football coach one day. You know, you know what I'm saying? Or, a, or AD or offensive defensive coordinator. So... You know, oh, leaving myself open for that. It's going to be a grind for me, and that's no problem. We'll set up a schedule once school gets going, you know, possibly on Saturdays doing some live streams and stuff like that. Or, you know, hey, don't be surprised if I go live at 9 o'clock at night just to play one game of my dynasty, you know, with you guys, just so that content continues. The playbook breakdowns will be even more intricate because we'll actually have the game, and we can show you different plays and things like that in game, you know, in the actual game that we're playing as opposed to showing you 14 playbooks. Does that make sense? So I appreciate the support, y'all. That's all I got. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Peace. EA Sports. It's in the game.